Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, welcome to Origins webinar on CRISPR RNP transfection. Actually, this webinar is co-hosted by Origin and Lipocalyx. Uh, my name is Xuan. I'm the moderator for the for the presentation. So let me in, uh, give everybody an intro. So transfection is an essential technology in delivering exogenous material into a living cell. So for a long time, the material to be delivered has been limited to plasmid DNA or short RNAs, such as RNAi. But recently, the need for delivery RNP, which is the RNA protein complex, increased dramatically due to the advances of CRISPR technology. So in practice, RNP transfection is not as straightforward as the nucleotide transfection. Although several products have been developed, the performance is still short of satisfaction. So um, currently, electroporation is still the preferred method. So scientists in the field are waiting for a simple chemical-based transfection method for RNP. So Origin and the Lipocalyx teamed up, and uh, we co-developed a new RNP transfection reagent called Euromer CRISPR. This new reagent demonstrates a great performance and a scalable trans uh, application. So today, I'd like to uh, introduce you to Dr. Sandra from Lipocalyx, who is this, uh, has been working on this uh, transfection reagent. So in the next 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, she will tell you more about Euromer CRISPR, our chemical-based RNP transfection reagent. Before we start, a few uh, logistic issues. All of you are muted. Uh, if any questions, you can use the question box to type, type in anytime during the session. And those questions will be addressed at the end of the session. We have a dedicated Q&A session. Uh, this whole presentation of the webinar is downloadable as handout during the session. The presentation is recorded, so and you will be sent a link just in case you missed something and wish to review. Without further ado, here is our CRISPR, RNT CRISPR transfection specialist, Dr. Sandra from Bifocalyx. Hello everyone, thanks for joining this webinar today and thanks to Origin for organizing. My name is Sandra Lagozer from the company Lipocalyx, manufacturer of the Viromer transfection reagents. In this presentation, I will give first an overview of the current state of the art of delivery solution usable around the CRISPR technology and I will then feature a new reagent for RNP delivery. We all agree CRISPR is a revolution that is completely changing the face of genome editing, and potential applications are almost limitless. Despite the simplicity of the technology, you may get caught up in front of all available information, particularly when it's about delivery aspects. But let's begin with some basics. Most of you may know this diagram, but it's essential for the following. The famous Cas9 protein, as well as other CRISPR-associated nucleases, take originally part of bacterial defense mechanisms. The real CRISPR revolution is that they have been re-engineered to cleave DNA in eukaryotic cells. As these proteins can be driven specifically to a certain site into the genome, thanks to a guide RNA sequence, it enables a very preci precise action on the target gene. But genome editing, which occurs after the Cas9 double strand break, belongs to cells only and to their capacity of repairing DNA. Since this mechanism is not perfect and prone to mistakes, it makes possible to create insertions or deletions through the non-homologous and joining pathway or if you add a DNA donor template to insert a desired sequence by recombination, which corresponds to the homology 
directed repair pathway. Like this, it's first possible to easily knock out genes, but also to knock in genes and to study their functions. Beyond genome editing, other applications are possible, such as gene tagging or gene regulation. A good example is the use of the dead Cas9, a Cas9 mutant with no cleavage activity to which you can bind uh, an inhibitor or an activator that would be active very pricelessly on a target gene. Whatever is the final objective, it's important to first be successful with the delivery of CRISPR components, and this remains still challenging. Why? First, because Cas proteins are big. The Cas9, for example, is 160 kilodalton. And second, guide RNAs have a high positive charge. Therefore, the right taxi should have first a really good packaging capacity. It should also protect the Cas protein and the guide RNA out and in the cells, be able to cross the cell membrane, and finally, not limit the release into the cytosol to let the complex reach the nucleus. So far, the most popular reported methods are first microinjections in one cell embryos to generate gene-edited animals by use of mRNA encoding Cas9 or directly with a preformed ribonucleoprotein. In cell cultures, it's common to use one or several plasmids expressing the Cas9 in which guide RNAs are cloned and to, and to deliver uh, with lipofection, viruses, or electroporation. We see already here <coughs> that the format of CRISPR components, plasmid, mRNA, or RNP, is of importance. Obviously, from the left to the right on this di diagram, the way of getting an active Cas protein into the nucleus gains in efficiency by reducing the need of using the cell machinery. But let's see more in detail what are the advantages and inconveniences of plasmid, mRNA, and RNP approaches. Working with plasmid is, of course, the easiest and most affordable way particularly because you can add selection markers, generate stable cells, and the delivery can be done with classical transfection. Important to note here that Origin, as a leading CRISPR products provider, offers a very broad range of constructs, and I strongly recommend to check the online protocols. It's very complete and helpful. While uh, CRISPR plasmid can work fine in many cases, this approach has unfortunately some limitations due to the time needed to have an active Cas protein and once made due to the persistence of this expression. It favors an un unwanted DNA cleavage out of the target site, and it's what we name off-target effects. <coughs> Excuse me. In terms of delivery, plasmid transfection is also not always ideal, for example, with primary cells or immune cells, because of induced stress or DNS activity. An alternative is then to use mRNA encoding the Cas protein and to co transfect this mRNA with the guide RNA. It's still affordable if you produce mRNA and guide RNA on your own by in vitro transcription. And here, the expression is transient, and then off-target effects are greatly reduced. The, end, the only inconvenience would be the cost if you purchase mRNA and guide RNAs, <coughs> and many people are still not comfortable with mRNA, thinking that it's not stable, then not easy to handle in the lab, which is actually not so difficult in most of modern labs. And keep in mind that if not yet a standard in academia, mRNA is a standard for the industry. The last option is using preformed RNP, which means transfecting directly an active Cas protein. Obviously, there is no lag. The, proteis, the protein is in the nucleus only some hours after transfection. 
and there is not a too long persistence since the, pro since the protein is rapidly degraded by the cells. As main effect, there is almost no off-target effect. <clears throat> Another advantage is that it's much easier to adjust the amounts of Cas9 and guide RNA you may need to achieve your editing. It's also more convenient to screen or test different guide RNAs. But it comes also with drawbacks, this method being the most expensive, not really for the Cas9, but at least for guide RNAs. And above all, this method is the most challenging in terms of delivery, as said before, because of size and charge of the RNP complex. Coming back to this slide I showed before, I would like to point out now that not only the format, but also the delivery technology needs to be considered. Here we see the, the interest of microinjection, of course, but for the rest, which delivery option is the best, how choosing, what is possible, these are maybe questions you are asking. This diagram is from a very nice, uh, nice review about delivery methods published last year. All available options related to the different formats, plasmid, mRNA, or RNP, are represented. You see with the, the symbols. The authors oppose viral vectors to non-viral vectors, themselves separated between physical methods like microinjection and electroporation and chemical methods like uh, nucleus penetrating peptides, liposomes, and nanoparticles. <clears throat> if we go more into details, viruses are very interesting for plasmid delivery, but have some uh, limitations in terms of size and are not ideal for clinical settings. Microinjection is clearly the best choice for one cell editing and works with all formats. Electroporation is definitely very advantageous too and is the most commonly used method so far. However, as these physical methods uh, work through a modification of the cells, they can have strong limitations for many applications. Hence, the need to consider chemical methods, which will rather play on the molecules to deliver, either by encapsulation or uh, complexation. While this review uh, reports a lot of facts about recent developments in the field, it surprisingly does not, uh, doesn't give a lot of consideration to polymer-based reagents. I will try to fill this gap with the upcoming slides. To do so, I will present what is possible with the viromer transfection technology, the viromers being typically polymer-based nanoparticle reagents. First, let me explain how we develop our reagents. Viromer, as a contraction of virus and polymer, is a technology based on polymer chemistry, which mimics a viral process. As blueprint, we use the fusion peptide of the flu virus hemagglutinin. This pH-sensitive peptide initiates the membrane fusion process, enabling the virus to escape from the late endosome once it has infected the cell. We translated uh, this feature into chemistry to reproduce the same effect. And it worked like this. Once a transfection complex is formed and added into a cell culture medium, it's taken up via the endocytosis pathway. Ongoing acidification of the compartment induces a molecular switch of the viromer and the complex gain hydrophobicity and then membrane crossing capacity. This results uh, into an active release into the cytosol, which is a limiting step for many other chemical transfectants, in particular liposomes, since their release is, on the contrary, passive. At Hippocalyx, we offer first performance reagents for plasmid transfection, Viromer Red, one of our bestsellers, and the new Viromer Plasmid, launched uh, just some weeks ago. As shown on this table, these reagents have proven efficiency with CRISPR plasmid in quite uh, difficult cells, such as uh, macrophages, cancer cells, or fibroblasts, to generate stable cells but also for uh, CRISPR interference with dead Cas9, for example. 
uh, sorry. Yeah, we have also a very powerful uh, reagent for mRNA transaction, which benefits from the internal expertise of Hippocalyx in the field of mRNA therapeutics. We are very happy that Origin is just launching uh, mRNA Cas9, and as shown here, that works good with our re reagent. Another illustration of the big potential of Weimar for mRNA CRISPR has been published recently. Here, the authors have successfully co-transfected guide RNA and mRNA encoding not for the Cas9, but for another Cas protein, the Cas 13 a which is not an endonuclease, but a ribonuclease. Like this, they managed stopping and even preventing cell infection from two strong viruses responsible for illustration of the big potential of viromer for mRNA CRISPR has been published here, in, uh, and the, the authors have successfully co-transfected guide RNA and mRNA, encoding not for the Cas9, but another Cas protein, the Cas 13 a which is not an endonuclease, but a ribonuclease. Like this, they manage stopping and even preventing cell infection from two uh, viruses responsible of uh, resp respiratory disease. I, I don't want to go into detail about the technology, the methodology, but just to explain the GFP fluorescence on the picture represents directly the activity of the nuclease. What you can see is that in comparison to electroporation or lipofection, the viromer transfection gives the strongest and the longest signal. If you have uh, more interest, I, I strongly recommend to read uh, this paper. It's a really nice work showing how CRISPR can be used for other purposes than pure genome editing. So last part of this talk will be centered on RNP delivery and how we develop our new reagent. While we tested our existing reagent for RNP, nothing uh, was good. Then we decided uh, to screen again our Viromare library to identify a most appropriate lead. To do so, we work in close collaboration, collaboration with Origin, and we use a simple phenotypic assay based on X cells stably expressing a red fluorescence. By knocking out the RFP expression in these cells, it was then easy to detect successful editing. From this screen, the selected viromer has been tested in various standard cell lines in terms of uh, delivery efficiency and toxicity, um, and editing efficiency by uh, knocking out the housekeeping gene HPRT1. From T7 uh, and sequencing, we detected, detected above 50 to 70 percent of NHEG editing events uh, for these cell lines. Important to note is the simplicity of optimization of the transfection protocol. <clears throat> On this graph, you can see the variability uh, of the final editing assessed for KO uh, HPRT1 again in one cell line. By playing on the starting uh, RNP concentration and the volume of transfection complex added onto the cells, it was easy to test a broad range of uh, final uh, RNP concentration from here around 6 to 40 nanomolar. In this case, we also try to use uh, two different Cas9. Surprisingly, you see that it's not perfectly uh, linear, meaning that it's not because you give more RNP that you will have more editing. editing. Uh, this titration permits to find uh, an optimal frame, <coughs> which helps to determine the best compromise between editing efficiency and not wasting too much uh, of your reagents, guide RNA, Cas9 environments. What I show in the last slides uh, was only internal data, internal development. We are happy to have now the first external data coming. The first example, here we see two C12 myoblasts. You see that the delivery was first checked by using label uh, guide RNAs, and it was also used to select the best guide RNA targeting the gene of interest between three different sequences. It was possible to reach up to 50% uh, of editing efficiency while previous attempts with plasmid uh, were never above 10%. Uh, 
A second nice feedback using capillary electrophoresis as detection method to estimate uh, NHG uh, events. Here you see uh, the customer reach uh, 50 to 60% of editing in primary fibroblast, so normally not so easy to transfect. Um, very interesting too in terms of protocol adjustment is the very high editing efficiency obtained by uh, this customer um, with endothelial cells. Uh, we recommend it to her to test different volume uh, with a protocol. Uh, and she also worked with an excess of guide RNA to Cas9, uh, 1 to 2.5, uh, which was a recommendation from the company who supplied the guide RNA. Last data I want to show were obtained from pancreatic cancer cells, also known as R2 transect. Here, a similar strategy as before. Three, uh, three different uh, guide RNA sequences were tested by fax with ovariomer and another reagent from Myrus. Both reagents, you see, uh, transfected well the guide RNAs with a slight advantage uh, to the viromer. From this, one guide RNA uh, was, uh, was used to test two different RNP concentrations, 12 and 50 nanomolar. And in final, the selected condition uh, led to 30% of positive cells, and it was possible to detect one half with the desired editing. <clears throat> so let's make a, a summary. I show you how our different biomers can work for plasmid, mRNA, or RNP delivery. But to be complete, we wanted to know if the biomer CRISPR could be used for HDR-mediated editing, which means adding a donor uh, DNA into the transfection mix. As reported recently, the best way is to introduce small insertions with single-strand DNA, even if uh, long uh, DNA are also used. In terms of delivery, it means either forming a big complex with the RNP or simply to do a co-transfection. <clears throat> I would like to show you first the technology based on complexation, not with a viromer, but with another polymer-based nanoparticle system. This work was published in Nature in 2017 by the team of Genedit in Berkeley. They were successful for delivering RNP and, and donor DNA in a clinical setting to cure the Duchenne muscle dystrophy a disease affecting muscle by lack of an essential protein, the dystrophin. Starting uh, from a gold particle, a first layer binds the donor DNA, then the RNP, to finally encapsulate everything into a cationic polymer. The so-called CRISPR gold complex, as transfection complex formed with environments, penetrates cells via endocytosis. The polymer has endosome disruptive properties and enables also a very efficient release into the cytosol. This CRISPR gold has been used first in vitro to restore the dystrophin expression in myoblast coming from KO mice. You can see here that the final HDR uh, editing is not very high, you see 3%, but it's a significant result compared to uh, lipofection and electroporation. The technology has been then applied in vivo by injecting the CRISPR gold directly into muscles of mutant mice. Here you can observe a clear dose effect on HDR rate, and more importantly, it's not shown here, sorry, but it's, it has a real positive incidence by reducing drastically muscle fibrosis affecting these mice. So CRISPR gold is then a very elegant example of possible complexation. But what about environmental CRISPR? Is it possible to use it to simply co-transfect the RNP together with a single strand DNA? To answer this question, we started from this paper in which many options were tested to increase the HDR rate. Among tested parameters, using a donor matching the target or the non-target DNA strand, the size of the insertion the size of homology arms using a co-transfection or sequential transfection appeared to contribute to an improvement. We then decided to work with a non-PAM donor 
uh, with a four nucleotide insertion, including a restriction site to check easily by PCR the HDR efficiency. We try both a co-transfection with standard condition corresponding to an NP ratio of six, and also by using two times more and three times more viromers that correspond to a ratio of nine and 12. And as second strategy, we try a sequential transfection, so first the donor and then the RNP. In both case, cases, we also um, uh, try to add or not an enhancer known to favor HDR editing. As first result, you see here for each condition in duplicates, the NHEG editing estimated with the T7 assay, the orange numbers corresponding to the standard protocol. We observed some variations, but globally, all conditions uh, gave a very good efficiency. After the high, uh, in tree digestion, we could finally detect a HDR signal, meaning that our single strand DNA was successfully inserted. And you see that the best results were obtained for standard protocol, NP6, um, with a clear effect of the, the, enhance, the, the enhancer. So it means there's no need to give more viromer, there's no need to make sequential transfection. This experiment is the first attempt with not a lot of optimization effort. 24% is also probably an underestimation of actual editing due to the methodology, but we have here a proof that the Viomer CRISPR has the capacity to co-transfect RNP with a DNA donor. It opens great perspectives for future use of the reagents in cell cultures, but hopefully also in vivo. <clears throat> As a conclusion, different formats of CRISPR components are possible. We have seen plasmid, <coughs> mRNA, or RNP. The choice will depend on cells, of course, but also on lab expertise and costs. But keep in mind that RNP is clearly superior. I strongly, I strongly recommend to ask Origin staff for more details since they provide all types of CRISPR components. A second decision to make is around the most appropriate uh, delivery method. It can be related to the chosen format, to the cell type also, but more proba probably to the final application. Among available methods, chemical transfection offers some strong advantages. It's easy to use, adjustable, scalable, and has a great potential for in vivo. And to finish, it was not the topic of the webinar, but you may wonder what are the benefits of using polymer-based reagents like the viromers rather than liposomes or lipid-based reagents. I say some words about the active endosome escape, but it's well known too that polymers do not interact with the cell physiology, are less toxic, or at least induce lower effects in downstream experiments compared to lipid-based reagents. This presentation is now finished. Sorry for the technical problems. I thank you for listening, and your questions are now very welcome. I thank you. available in the market? Great question. So Sandra, you want to answer that, whether the, the, the product is available? Sorry, I lost Sandra again. So, but to okay. answer your question, uh, yes, it is available. Uh, so Lipocalyx, which is based in Germany, uh, they do have it on their website. And Origin is the Exclusive distributor for North America. 
So if you are based in the US or Canada, uh, welcome to go to Origin's website. Uh, we supply your uh, transfection reagents for different substrates. Uh, there's M for mRNA, uh, there's a Viramer Red, and also CRISPR RNP. We have uh, Viramer CRISPR. Um, so, welcome to come to Origin or go to Lipocalyx to uh, see the product. Sandra, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, sorry. I answered the first question for you. Yeah, yeah, you, you made it good. That's good. Okay, let me give, uh, give you a next question. Uh, which is the best way to design a CRISPR experiment to delete a specific region of a genome? Okay, so that probably is on the CRISPR design uh, question, probably that will take a much more extensive um, explanation about the, the, the experiment design. So today our topic is about the, the delivery system. So we will we'll put this one um, afterwards to address this one. Okay, Sandra, here's a question for you. Does Viramer CRISPR work well for, with primary T cells? Have you tested this? No, uh, unfortunately we are not able to transfect T cells and it's not only the viromers, it's all chemical uh, reagents. It's due to we assume it's something uh, occurring during the endocytosis, T cells and B cells um, apparently destroy uh, what you deliver. You can see a delivery uh, if you use a label uh, siRNA, for example, but there's no uh, cellular action. Once into the cell, it disappears, there's no action. The same for siRNA, plasmid, mRNA, whatever. So forget it. <laughs> Basically, T cell lack of endocytosis actually on their membrane, so this chemical method is not not going to attack the T cell, and the T cell is uh, on its own category. Um, mm. Yeah, to my knowledge, uh, only electroporation or virus uh, transduction are the, the methods to use with T cells, unfortunately. Okay. Um, so there's a question, okay, Sandra, um, and this is about your presentation. First of all, yeah, great presentation to, uh, about Viramer. For delivery of CRISPR, Cas9 RNT plus donor, I'm still confused about what NP6 was. So your uh, NP6, yeah, okay, the ratio, so, so, so the ratio N to P, it means uh, for of, um, uh, what is, uh, P is for phosphate, you know, the, it means the, the DNA, the siRNA you want to deliver, and N, what is it in English, sorry, and uh, uh, nitrogen? Azot, I know it in French, sorry. Uh, which is part of, of the polymer. So N is the polymer, and P is a deliverable. And you by mixing them, by making a transfection complex, you, you work with a certain NP ratio. But you can change this ratio by changing either the amount of uh, the reagent or the amount uh, of the, the molecule you want to deliver. That's, that's it, the NP ratio. Let's say it's the complexation rate. Okay. Thank you. And You're welcome. Your question is about the transfection rate. Which cell? Sorry, I didn't get it. Monocytes. Ah, monocytes. Um, not yet, but with, all, uh, with other reagents, we have good results, uh, particularly for siRNA. So let's try. If someone has a potential, uh, we'll be happy to, to provide a test sample and to see what is possible. But I think it's totally okay. Okay, so the answer is not, we have not tried, but the monocytes we have worked with RNAi, so it looks like the membrane is receptive for transfection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other environment work good for monocytes. Also mRNA. Yeah, also mRNA. They are, they are, they are transfectable with our technology. We have an issue with plasmid, but not about the delivery. It, it's because uh, once the DNA is delivered uh, into the cytosol, these cells simply destroy it because it's a foreign uh, DNA. They have a lot of uh, en uh, enzymatic uh, cascades degrading DNA. 
But with mRNA, siRNA, we have good results. So probably it will work uh, fine with RNP, just that it has never been tested so far. Okay. And so can we show share our screen? Okay, sure. Um, okay, uh, there's a question about how much does the uh, CRISPR, um, the VMR cost? So um, uh, we were just going to go to our website and just show you uh, quickly on the cost of uh, this experiment and how do you find it. Um, so can you see our screen? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to run quickly. So um, on the Origins website, you can search for transfection regions or just search experiment. You can come land to the page describing experiment. So for CRISPR experiment, and uh, you can see the the cost on our website currently is uh, $325. Yeah, $325. $325 for 500 reactions. Um, so this is totally affordable. And we also are running sample size. Uh, sample size is, is only $120. But 105 105 And you can uh, get one for free if you purchase something else with it. So that to cover the shipping. So I think there's similar pricing on the uh, lipocalyx side uh, if you happen to be in EU. And you can purchase straight from lipocalyx as well. Okay, next question. Um, <clears throat> so this works with muscle cells and the neurons. How about fibroblasts and osteoblasts? How about the bone marrow stem cells? So basically, this is another question about other cell types, whether Vilmer will work for them. Um, as I as I show uh, during the presentation, uh, the first results are coming, and you have seen good uh, results with fibroblasts. Uh, what I show, myoblasts, things like that. But for any new uh, cell types uh, you want to test, I cannot say, actually. Uh, I can only rely to what the other, uh, the, the old environments are able to do. But it, it should be tested, and primary uh, neurons are maybe difficult. It's simply they are difficult uh, to transect uh, in general because it's very uh, differentiated cells. But I, I, I always... Uh, encourage people to try. We never know because the product is so new. I cannot say for each cell type what they're going to do, uh, what they're going to have. Uh, really not. Uh, you can go on our website. There is a cell database showing the efficiency we get for the different cell lines. It's very honest. You can check. But for the Viromark CRISPR, I cannot say. Uh, very sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's okay. I think the good thing is that uh, we have a free sample. If you uh, save you shipping, if you order any origin product, you can test it to yourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We have a sample size uh, that is uh, you can purchase it if you. That's the only thing you need, or you can just tag along with other products and they get the sample size for free. And we actually rely on our customers to expand uh, the spectrum of sales that uh, can be successfully transacted with um, um, viewers. So um, that list is keep growing, but uh, the, the, for CRISPR viewers, that have a short life so far. So we, uh, I mean, it just launched, so we don't have a huge collection of lists yet. But for the older viewers, you can go to our website and you can see um, each one. They have a long list of um, um, Cell type that has been published to show that it works. Yeah. Yeah, we are now at around uh, 200 publications uh, showing uh, use of viromers for many, many cell types. So, so you can see here the color means the viromer blue, viromer green. Yeah, that's it. it is because the first viromers were color name products. So now we have new reagents, uh, not with color names. And of course, with not yet a lot of data because they were launched uh, just uh, uh, some weeks ago, and the table corresponds to the old, uh, to the first generation of biomer, let's say. Right. Okay. Um, 
but it's the same workflow, it's the same technology. So if you see, like you see, uh, you show now on the, the screen the A549 cells, it, it works good with Viomer Red for plasmid and mRNA. It works good for siRNA with Viomer Blue. It should work, uh, and, and I show a lot of data with Viomer CRISPR because uh, we use these cell lines for all our optimization. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, we can rely what is possible with Viomer Red, Blue, and so, and the new ones, because it's the same technology. Okay, yeah. So then we encourage all our scientists to, to give it a try um, and let us know uh, your results, which then they, we will list it, add it on to this table to, in the, to help other scientists. Yeah. Okay, uh, another question. Is there a positive control for transfection using the viral CRISPR to assess that the transfection works properly? Mm -hmm. um, actually, I'm sorry, I don't know exactly what you have at origin, but uh, it's possible to use housekeeping genes like I, I did in, my, uh, in the, the, the data I show uh, with HPRT1 uh, gene, uh, housekeeping gene. It's used as a control when you want to test a new sequence for a new target. Uh, in, in many protocols, you will find they use a housekeeping gene like HPRT1 as a control. Yeah, I suppose um, if the guide RNA can be a fluorescent labeled, and then... Yeah, that's, that's something else. The delivery and the editing are two different things. Of course, it's important to have a good delivery, uh, to have, at the end, a good editing. But these two things, people should uh, really distinguish the, the efficiency of delivery that you can track with a label uh, guide RNA, for example, or label Cas9, it's also possible. But it's not the same as the, the editing you will have at the end. Uh, I show in my data, you can see 100% of delivery, but the final editing depends. It depends on your guide RNA sequence, how you design it, and how the cells uh, are efficient into repairing the DNA. You know, the delivery is one thing, but how the cell will uh, repair and edit and finally uh, repair the DNA, uh, it's not in our hands. We have delivered, but yeah. we don't know uh, what is possible once into the cells. So yeah, there's two things. If yeah. people want to check the delivery, okay, they can use a label, uh, a label guide RNA, but to have a control of the editing, it's something else. That's why using a housekeeping gene is a good thing. Okay. Yeah, so the question is, which level of a possible control? Uh, so right now, the, the kit does not come with any control. No, it doesn't come with a label uh, guide RNA, no. Okay, I think we have... It's something we can think about. It's actually a good idea. We can think about it, but for the moment, no. Okay. And so the, I think for the time's sake, uh, we will just take one last question. Okay. <laughs> How does the Viramer RNP get access to the nucleus from the cytoplasma? Um, so, actually, they don't need to go to nucleus. No, they don't go. Uh, they stop in the cytosol. They release a payload, and it's over. Uh, the rest is the cells. Uh, how, uh, how the RNP will reach the nucleus? It's part of the cell uh, physiology, uh, the cell um, transport mechanism. It's not right. about uh, not about the, the taxi, the Viromer. The beauty of the RNP is they don't need to uh, work through nucleus, and the RNA is translated in the cytosol, and also as well as the dynamic. Oh, I think the Cas9 has a nuclear localization signal. Yeah, then. it's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Most of uh, Cas9 you can have uh, as commercial source as yeah. a nuclear localization sequence. Most of them. Oh, it's right. Yes. So the protein mm. has the, the, the nuclear localization signal. It sometimes has mm. So that one will yeah. bring that into the nucleus. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, I think we addressed most of the questions. There's still a few left, but I think the time is running out. Uh, mm -hmm. Sandra, and you can uh, go to, through the question list, and we will. Uh, of course. Then, and we can do that afterwards. We have one-on-one -on -one, uh, email to okay. reach out to those people. Yeah, who, of course, people can email me. Uh, I will answer them if it's not too much, of course. <laughs> okay. Yeah.
Thank you so much, everyone, for your patience. Yeah, we we uh, we do did. I do apologize for our technical uh, difficulties um, throughout the presentation. But overall, thank you. Everything went out well. Thank you, Sandra, uh, for thank you. Our presentation. It's very educational. Thank okay. you. It was the objective. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, appreciate your time. And uh, we, in, you will receive an email, and uh, um, and we, we will also send you the access to the uh, the recording, so you can review the presentation if you happen to miss a portion of it. Thank you, and everyone, have a good day. Good night. Good night, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, that you will be interested in this product and come to visit us on our website. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye.